Hello and welcome to the Patient Educators Update, where we talk about patient education in a clinical environment. I'm Chuck Jones with Synergy Broadcast, and I want to welcome our expert guest, Fran London. Hi, Fran. Hi, Chuck. Fran is the patient education specialist at Phoenix Children's Hospital in Phoenix, Arizona, and she is also the author of the book, No Time to Teach. I didn't have my prop with me. There it is. I'll hold it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Essence of Patient and Family Education for Healthcare Providers. This is a book written for nurses, nurse educators, and I might say doctors and others that uh, struggle with how to deal with patient education. We normally get most of our topics from uh, uh, Fran's book. Uh, today we're going to go from an article that I found the other day, Fran, and it was about patient engagement. And as I, as I look back on some things that I write about, um, I use the term patient engagement quite a lot. It seems to make sense to me that patient engagement is um, where you engage the patient, patient, you have a conversation, there's exchange of knowledge, there's give and take, and the whole idea is to bring the patient along to an understanding of what they need to do to take care of themselves and, and, and have the confidence they need to do it, um, which is also what patient in, uh, education is all about. And as I read um, the article, um, and I, I was a little struck by a couple of things. One, I looked up the definition of engagement, and it says things like to attract and hold influence or power, um, to induce to participate, um, to, um, uh, to enter into a conflict or battle. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm not <laughs> sure that that's the right word. Uh, but then I, as I read this article, um, the article was called Patient Engagement on Metrics and Meaning. Um, the author goes on to say that there, uh, here's the quote, there is broad support for the idea that patients should be involved and should take part in health care, but no clear consensus exists about what precisely this means and how much or to what extent patients are included. I, I, I was stunned by that because all you ever see are buzzwords about patient engagement, patient partnership, patient centered this, patient centered that. And here's an article that says we don't agree on what patient engagement means and we're not sure where the patient fits in in this. Right. So so I'm, I'm kind of off the rails on this thing and I'm guessing you have some opinions about it. Uh, one of the things that I was struck is that um, the uh, either the author or someone was quoted as saying it's a notion that patients are critical stakeholders in their health care decision. Do you think it's a notion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this whole thing is, is very strange to me, too. Uh, it, I think we're moving from the old style of health care which is the doctor is king and right. the patient is stupid and you know the doctor tells you what to do and you do it right. to this more collaborative model and it's a hard transition I think we're trying to figure it out and because healthcare providers really haven't had education mm -hmm. on how to do this mm -hmm. because nobody really knows how to do it right. um, and you need participation from both sides you need both the doctors and the patients to change behaviors and expectations in order for this to work. I think that's why we're seeing so much controversy in the literature. Yeah, because uh, traditionally it's, uh, you know, if I'm in the hospital, the doctor comes in and he, and he or she tells me, okay, you know, this went well, this is bad, you need to do this, this, and this. And I say, okay. And they say, do you have any questions? And I say, mm, no. And so that's to me is the tradition. And the reason I didn't have any questions in the past was I didn't know any better. However, now I spend time looking on the Internet. And, it, of course, you know, everything you read on the Internet is true. Absolutely. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the idea is, at least today, uh, I want to be a more informed patient so I can have a discussion. And we've had doctors that weren't interested in having discussions, and we don't go to those doctors anymore but but I, I think that's that kind of sums up what you're talking about, right? And and there's a range. I mean, there are patients mm -hmm. who still want the old system where they just get told what to do and they can go home and not do it. 
and the patients who are very involved and want to have a discussion and want to know why is this not true and why is that true. Um, so it's it's hard for everybody to get get through this. Yeah, yeah. Now I noticed. Uh, I, I did after I researched some of the things that I write about. I went and looked at some of our old episodes, and we rarely, if ever, use the term patient engagement. And when I say we, I mean primarily you. So you clearly got a bias there. So why don't you explain <laughs> what what your take is on this? Um, I think it's a buzzword. I just mm-hmm. I think that it doesn't because it's not so well defined. Yeah. I tend not to use it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like to talk about involving the patient in the process and um, individualizing teaching to the needs of the right. patient. Those are kind of what they're implying in a lot of patient engagement references, but patient engagement is also used to uh, measure encounters and to, to see, you know, are, are your patients hitting your website? Are they engaged? And that to me is not a measure of any real healthcare outcome process. <laughs> yeah, now, now let me make sure I understand what you're saying. In, engagement is we're having a conversation and we're talking back and forth, but that shouldn't be the end goal. The end goal should be either curing or um, uh, rehabilitation or understanding proper maintenance, like for a diabetic or something like that and that the patient follows um, whatever the proper guidelines should be to make themselves better and does get better over time. That's different, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. And and in fact, I would go even further and say ultimately what would be best is that first there are mutually defined goals between the healthcare provider and the patient so that if the patient has no interest in a cure but just wants to get rid of the pain if the pain has gotten rid of then we have met the goal and we have a good outcome Mm -hmm. um i think that makes more sense (laughs) because some patients don't want to make the lifestyle uh changes necessary to go even further and to cure or whatever yeah yeah and and um i'll i'll give you a, a, a quick personal example as we've talked my wife has diabetes and her last doctor's appointment was not particularly good her a1c was pretty elevated and, and she admitted that you know yeah she she had not been really good about you know taking care of it and and the whole the doctor spent the rest of the time communicating with her and me when uh when i spoke up about what her next goal should be and it was strictly about what can you individually do to get your a1c down over the next three months which is when our next appointment would be and my wife made some commitments about things that she would do and she's stuck to it and um that was the only goal for the doctor for this thing so she did um i would use the term engage but she we came to a mutually beneficial agreement for a goal about what my wife would focus on and uh, she had gotten where she was lackadaisical about uh, checking her blood sugar, and now this first thing she does in the morning, and we've watched it decline steadily uh, since that last visit, and she's paying more attention to things, and she's more engaged. So so I think that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, that's a perfect example. Um, and that's the way it has to be because life gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> Healthcare yeah. isn't the only thing that goes on. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's talk about this in relationship to patient education. Uh, our our primary viewer are going to be nurses and nurse educators and patient educators. Uh, what would you tell them about uh, patient engagement, patient involvement, patient education? Where's where should they focus? I think when you're doing patient education, the key is having the communication. Uh, interactive and like you said mutual and um, productive yeah. yeah the the term patient engagement is used by other people measuring things that when you see it try to figure out what their definition is and what their goal is because it may not be improved health outcomes it may be a business goal and it may be um, something that has to do with um, other measures mm-hmm that that have nothing to do with the the patient yeah and and so the end goal 
is to uh, find some agreed upon common ground that gets the patient moving in the right direction. And uh, if we take it from a practical sense and take your words to heart from a few minutes ago, it doesn't have to be the end all be all goal because that may be too big of a mountain to scale. But as long as it's something that moves in that positive direction, that's a that's a step in the right direction uh, to get to where you want to go. Is that an accurate yes. restatement? Yes, that's what I say. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. We'll close it up right there. So why don't you tell folks where they can find you online? I've got a blog at notimetoteach.com, and I'm on Twitter at no time to teach. Right. And you've your book is available from. Um, uh, booksellers uh, uh, here and yonder, Amazon and everybody else in e-form and uh, a paper form. And uh, your publisher, Pritchett & Hull, has a discount offering for bulk purchases for uh, folks that want to use, um, use it for in-service. And their website is p-h.com. We'd encourage you to go there and check it out. And for those folks that want to add some um, additional tools to their in-hospital patient education and also at-home follow-up, uh, check out uh, Synergy Broadcast and our video-on-demand product. We call it MMDS or Medical Media Delivery System. It's a great way to deliver video on demand in the hospital as well as in the home or to mobile devices after the patient has been discharged. And um, we invite you to check it out and also call us if you have any questions. So, Fran, this was a fun topic. Uh, I just hate it when I can't find stuff that you're interested in. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much for engaging us today. <laughs> Thank you for your engagement. Too. You bet. Okay. I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.